大石みのるの英語英会話三。Lesson eleven: Herpes simplex encephalitis. Skit one. Good morning, Doctor Oishi. Good morning, Doctor Brown. You were on duty last night, weren't you? Yes, I had an emergency admission last night. Tell me about the case. The patient is a 20 year old woman who noticed a fever and a headache three days ago. Two days ago, she went to a local doctor and got antibiotics. Last night, she became confused and her parents brought her to the emergency room. What did you find on physical and neurological examination? Body temperature was 39.0 degrees centigrade. She was confused and disoriented as to time, place, and person. She had a stiff neck and the Koenig sign was positive. The rest of the physical and neurological examination was normal. Did you perform a lumbar puncture on her? Yes. The opening pressure was 250 millimeters CSF. Cells 150 per cubic millimeter, predominantly lymphocytes, protein 100 milligrams per deciliter, and glucose 60 milligrams per deciliter. What was blood glucose at the time of the lumbar puncture? I didn't measure the blood glucose. Well, you see, if the blood glucose is 100, a CSF glucose of 60 is normal. But if the blood glucose is 200, a CSF glucose of 60 is abnormal. I didn't know that. Starting next time, I'll measure the blood glucose too. Did you gram stain the CSF? Yes, but no microorganisms were seen. What do you think she has? I think she has meningitis. What kind of meningitis? Viral meningitis is the most likely diagnosis, but we should also consider tuberculous meningitis and fungal meningitis. What tests do you plan? I requested blood and urine tests, chest x rays, a tuberculin test, a CT scan of the head, and an EEG. What treatment did you start? I started a drip infusion of glycerol and three liters of oxygen. Is she on antibiotics? No. I discontinued it because the CSF findings were different from those of bacterial meningitis. CSF findings were different between untreated bacterial meningitis and partially treated bacterial meningitis. The CSF findings of this patient are compatible with partially treated bacterial meningitis. Should I start antibiotics? Yes, we had better use antibiotics until bacterial meningitis is ruled out. What is your impression? My impression is herpes simplex encephalitis. In order to confirm the diagnosis, we need to measure the viral antibody titers in the serum and the CSF. I heard that a brain biopsy is used for the diagnosis of herpes simplex encephalitis in the USA. That's true, but instead of a brain biopsy, an ELISA is used for the diagnosis of herpes simplex encephalitis in Japan. What does ELISA stand for? ELISA stands for enzyme linked immunosorbent assay. What is the major difference between the ELISA and conventional methods, such as hemagglutination inhibition, complement fixation, and the neutralization test? The conventional methods take about three weeks to make a diagnosis, but the ELISA only takes about two weeks. Do we have to wait for two weeks to make a diagnosis? No. A viral antibody titers are for confirming the diagnosis. A presumptive diagnosis can be made by symptoms and signs, CSF findings, a CT scan, and an EEG. I'll get a CT scan and an EEG as soon as possible. When you get the results of those tests, let's discuss this case again. Skit 2. Hello, is this the CT room? Yes. Is John there? Speaking. Hi, John. This is Dr. Brown speaking. Hi, Dr. Brown. Will you do me a favor? I have a case for an emergency CT scan. Can you do it right now? Well, right now I'm doing a CT scan on another patient, but I'll be finished in about 20 minutes. Bring your patient down in 20 minutes and I'll be ready for you. Thank you very much. 20 minutes later, at the CT room. I brought my patient. Is she cooperative? No, she is confused. Uh huh. Please help me move the patient from the stretcher to this bed. Okay. Can she stay still? No, I think she needs sedation. I'll inject diazepam. Thanks. That'll let us get a good scan. 
Skip three. I got the CT scan of the head and the EEG. Let's see the CT scan first. The plain CT scan shows a low density area in the right temporal lobe. The enhanced CT scan shows a linear enhancement in the right temporal lobe. I agree with you. What do you think from this CT scan? This suggests herpes simplex encephalitis, but is also compatible with cerebral infarction. Does she have any cardiac murmur or high erythrocyte sedimentation rate? No, she doesn't have any risk factors for cerebral infarction. All right, now let's see the EEG. The background activity is seven hertz. Paroxysmal bursts of sharp waves and slow waves are seen over the right hemisphere. Yes, these are called periodic lateralized elliptiform discharges and are seen in herpes simplex encephalitis and in cerebral infarction. We can rule out cerebral infarction from the clinical presentation and the CSF findings. These laboratory findings and her clinical course strongly suggest herpes simplex encephalitis. Should we start RIA? There is a paper saying that acyclovir is better than RIA for the treatment of herpes simplex encephalitis. Let's use acyclovir. I see. Thank you for the discussion.